Remember last week when I showed you some reminders, tips, and tricks for Android, some strategies? Well, I've got a new strategy for you that just launched. It's called Family Bell, and that's up next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So last week, I spent some time taking a look at reminders because in this world of distance learning and full-time work here at the house, I need systems in place that are going to keep me on tasks so I don't miss important meetings or even like important record times like this one right here. And it was right about the time that I was finishing up last week's episode that Google dropped some news of a new feature coming to assistant devices. And it's absolutely applicable to what we're talking about. So I've had some time to play around with it. And I'm going to show you all about Family Bell. Now, what is Family Bell? Right, right there in the name, it, it implies that it's ideal for a family setting. Don't turn off this episode right away because of the name. This could be used for any number of things, but I think it is, in, in the end, designed with distance learning in mind. Google essentially created this feature that interoperates with Google Home devices and smart displays to kind of act as an alert system um, with kind of like the school mentality in mind. You know, when you're at a school and you're in the hallway and then the bell rings, you know, you've got like a minute to get to your next class. That's the idea behind Family Bell. Uh, it does require the home app on your device in order to manage it, but um, you're going to get the majority of these announcements through your Google Home or your smart display device. And uh, it's pretty sweet. So I'm going to show you kind of how to set it up and what to expect and how to use it and a few other things. So let's dive right in. So first of all, on your device, you do, like I said, uh, need to have the home app. So make sure and tap on the home app on your device and then tap the profile uh, picture for your account. Now you can see here, you have a bunch of settings, go into assistant settings, and then make sure you're in the assistant tab. And when you scroll down, you'll find the new section uh, called Family Bell. This did roll out just last week, so you should find it in there. Um, that's one way to get to it. You can actually summon assistant and get there as well, although you can't really uh, make any changes to it with your voice, but you can go into these settings. With assistant, you just summon it and you say, manage Family Bell and then you tap the setting button uh, that appears there afterwards. So here we are, we're in the family bell screen. And once you're there, you just tap add a bell. And here is where you can get really creative. The bell announcement is what you want assistant to say when this particular notification bell sounds. In my opinion, this is instantly better than the reminders that you get on assistant. Recall that reminders simply play a chime and then it says something along the lines of like, there is a reminder for Jason, but it doesn't really tell you what it is. And for me, I really like the idea of a speaker just like screaming out into the world like, hey, dummy, you've got a Zoom meeting right now. And uh, that ends up helping me. Uh, maybe it'll help you. So this goes one step further and actually does that. And you can tell it to say, hey, dummy, if you like, that's totally up to you. So this announcement that comes through, it's loud, it's specific, and it's whatever you want it to say. So for instance, hey, Jason, get off your butt and take a break. You'll be more effective later. Yes, that's the amount of context that I need to do to keep myself on track. Now, of course, you'll want to set a timer for that reminder to sound. Uh, so pick a time. In this case, I need to be reminded to step away in the afternoon. Consequently, I need to be uh, reminded to step away in the morning as well. Um, but we're going to focus on the afternoon here. Uh, and that's just because if I don't walk away a little bit. I end up sitting at my desk, which just happens to be my bed over there, uh, <laughs> throughout the afternoon. And by the end, I'm just like a zombie when I'm all done with it. So I don't want that. No one likes zombie Jason. So I'm going to set this for 2.30 PM, 2.30 in the afternoon. And I can set this to repeat any day of the week. Of course, my work days are Monday through Friday. Uh, so I'm going to set that here Every Monday through Friday, this is going to sound, and this break is always going to be necessary, so I can feel comfortable doing that. 
Finally, which speaker in my house should this announcement sound on? Well, I'm up in my studio or, you know, my mass, the, the bedroom upstairs. So whatever you want to call it. Uh, so this is where I want it to ring. So I'm going to go ahead and put master bedroom in there. And this bell will be enabled by default, of course, here in the settings. Uh, it is nice to have that little switch there. Maybe you're going away for a week and you don't need your speakers speaking out into the, the wilderness <laughs> while you're gone, or maybe someone's staying here. Whatever, you can come up with your reasons, but you can switch it on and off uh, as you see fit. And finally, we'll just tap to create the new bell. And with that, it's added to my list of bell announcements. So we've created this new bell at this point. We've done the work to create it. Now it's just a matter of time before the conditions are met and that we experience the reminder that is a family bell. So once that time rolls around, my Google Home or my smart display is gonna light up and then now it's gonna serenade me with a new bell. Hey Jason, get off your butt and take a break. You'll be more effective later. I also get a notification on my phone uh, that appears up in the notification tray. If I happen to be out of earshot of the home device, that's great. It's going to give me a, a little you know, brief chime, but it's going to be up in the notifications to give me a visual cue that something happened. Uh, if the sound on the home gets annoying, of course, I can simply tap my home device and it will shut it up like you can do with most other alarms and stuff that happen through your Google home device. Um, Honestly, this is the kind of obnoxious alert that I was hoping for, that I really wanted to be able to create a system for. So it's really cool that Google uh, just released this because I'm already leaning into it pretty heavily. So it's obvious that Google set up Family Bell to be a tool that's helpful with distance learning. You can see there's a whole bunch of templates down at the very bottom. You can scroll down to the bottom and see things like time to munch on some lunch, and it's recess, time to have some fun, and three, two, one, it's a prime time for math time. But really, this could be used for any reason that I've shown. Those templates, you know, make it school centric, but it's really up to you. Like if you just need an obnoxious alerting system, then here you go. Um, and we've been using it so far, and I have to say, my kids actually really respond to it very well. They hear the chime, they hear their name as part of the announcement. It really kind of wakes them up. They're like, oh, I'm about to miss a meeting. Uh, I have it go off for me, and it pulls me out of my zombie-like state while I'm working so that I actually get off my butt and go for a walk, and I feel rejuvenated after. It's just, it's, it's a really great approach to using these speakers to just be sure that we don't miss really important things, but it does have some room for improvement. For example, uh, it does not allow for multiple rooms to go off at once. You're, you're locked into selecting a single speaker for these announcements. If you wanted the same announcement to play, um, like if I wanted it to play in my kid's bedroom, in the living room and the kitchen, because I don't know where they're going to be at that particular moment to hear it, I'd have to create three of these and set each of them to a different room not totally ideal. I have to imagine they're going to bake this in uh, as a feature at some point, but Google can sometimes work at a snail's pace, so who knows when that's going to happen. Also, I mentioned briefly earlier, you can't program Family Bell with your voice, and that would be really nice, right? Because sometimes, you know, taking my, my kids' school schedules, for example, there's a lot of things that repeat the same time, the same day of week, every week. But there are some one-off things that happen. At 3 p.m. today, there's a math lesson or whatever that I need to make sure that they're on, and it's a one-time thing. It would be really nice to be like, hey, G, set up a family bell for 3 p.m. today. Savannah, your math lesson is about to begin. And that would be all that would be needed. Uh, instead, I have to open up the app and go through the routine there. It's not the end of the world, but it would be nice to program it by voice, be able to set it and move on and forget about it. About it. And finally, family members can't see the bells that were created by other family members. So if you have multiple family members tied together within the Google ecosystem, um, if I set up a, a family bell that is applicable to the entire family, as these school reminders are, my wife, if she's logged into her account in Assistant, isn't going to see any of those bells. So she might also create them, or she might want to tweak them, which would require her to go into my settings in order to do it. So these are just a couple of things that I'm sure they're going to tackle. These seem This seems like low-hanging fruit at some point. Um, but nonetheless, 
uh, minor annoyances with Family Bell. Like I said, we've already begun relying on these. It's working really well for us, and uh, I find it very interesting and odd that it happened immediately after last, week, last week's episode because it really is the solution that I've been looking for. So I hope it's helpful for you too. And uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Send me an email, hoa at twit.tv for hands on Android, of course. You can also send me questions, tips, tricks, that sort of stuff. Uh, you can find the show page at twit.tv slash hoa. That's where you can link out to all of your the podcatchers that have uh, the podcast there. Whichever podcatcher you love, it's linked there. Uh, you can also link out to YouTube and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and listening to the show each and every week. Thanks to John uh, Ashley for editing and producing this show on the back end. And we'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more. Thank you.